Hey guys, my name is Hudson Phillips. I'm a writer and producer from Atlanta, Georgia. Um, I wrote and produced the film This World Alone. And um, part of the cool thing that we're doing with that film is a anthology book of these 30 stories that are all set in post-apocalyptic worlds. Here's a copy of it. You guys haven't seen an actual physical, physical copy, have you? No, not yet. No, it's so incredible. cool. <laughs> this is the pre-version, so it's still got the little um, not for resale stamp on there, but it's pretty awesome. 288 pages of stories and comics um, all, all set in post-apocalyptic worlds. So I'm here today with um, Angie Farella and Ali Peace. And um, they are uh, two of the contributors to this book. Um, they wrote a story. Um, gosh, I forgot to write down the name. What's the name of your story again? Exuvia. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so wait, tell, tell me about this title and, and, and where it came from, because I actually have no idea what that word means. Yeah. Uh, do, do you want to say it? <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> um, so when we were going through, and by the time we had like this chapter, this like short portion of it um, done, it felt to us like the most, like we were trying to find a way to describe the feeling that we were giving and what we wanted to focus on with this specific portion of the story. And um, the word exuvia is the like scientific name for the what's left when an animal sheds its skin or it changes its shell. Um, so it's kind of like an empty shell or husk. That's very cool. So um, let's go ahead and tell me um, a little bit about how you guys started writing, a little bit of your own writing journey, um, how you met each other and um, started writing together. Um, I have always really liked books and I think that's kind of where everybody starts. But um, just in school and stuff, I really liked English and all those fun things. So projects like in classes like that. And um, in college, I actually got to pick um, to take because you get to do like RWS or whatever and persuasive writing, but I got, there was like an option that would fit and it was a fictional writing class. And so that was like, it felt a lot more like, oh, like I get to like try this, like in a, in a real setting a little bit more than like high school, middle school, that kind of stuff. And so um, you just read more and all that. And then um, yeah. we actually met sort of in the college career, which is more plays. We were doing like sort of the theater thing. Um, and that's just more and more writing and art and content. And that's, that's kind of, it all comes yeah. from movies, TV, anything, anything with words or not words. It's just all storytelling. And that's kind of where it all comes from for me. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. Yeah, for me, I think it was very similar. I was also always reading when I was younger. Um, I remember writing what I guess now you would call like fan fiction, but I was too young to know what that was. I would just yeah. kind of keep going on stories after I would finish writing, like I would finish reading a book and be like, well, that's not how I wanted it to end. Um, so that's kind of how I started writing was just writing endings that I wanted. Um, <laughs> and then I, same thing, high school and college. I just, I love all of my English classes. I've always loved studying literature. Um, and then I've kind of explored, like Allie was saying, we, we really work on a lot of storytelling and, every medium possible so gotcha so you guys are currently writing in multiple mediums not just prose and but also what screenplays plays all kinds of stuff i need to dip my toes in it's mostly been um sort of genre fiction for me and just kind yeah. of like um short stories that would always see they would be like the potential for a much bigger world because i would start writing them and i'd be like this is so much i want more of that so i'd like sort of write it and I'd turn it in and everyone would be like, I, this feels like just like a little part. And I was like, I, I, I can't help it. Like, it, I want to <laughs> see the whole thing. Yeah. And so it's, yeah. So getting to do plays and like the writing classes giving you those kind of prompts and stuff has been, yeah. I don't even That's remember awesome. what I was saying. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So and tell then, me. I'm yeah, I've. Go ahead. Sorry. I, I've also done pretty much similar stuff. I have started writing a couple play stuff and, scenes and, and stuff as well but um, cool. mostly focusing on prose at the moment so you guys write both together and apart then mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. great so tell me because i i've written screenplays with other writers before um and it kind of lends itself to multiple writers because you're it's a kind of a blueprint for something bigger, right? But prose feels so personal to me that I can't imagine writing something with another person. So tell me a little bit about, um, first of all, how you guys decided to write together. And then I wanna know a little bit about just how you do it. What's the, the practicality of actually getting a story done with two people? I think that we just talk a lot about 
um, stories because we've like uh, gotten to experience a lot of the same art together, going to the same college and getting to like be friends and just, mm -hmm. you know, seeing movies or watching shows together. And then we'd talk about it a lot. And then we would discuss stories that we wanted to create or we wanted to like explore different worlds or something. And then we were like, oh, and then this, and then this. So you just kind of like build on each other. And then we were like, why don't we just, why don't we do that? Like, why do don't we create together. our own? Yeah. Yeah. We've had a whole bunch of different conversations about different projects. Um, this one, logistically, I think um, we started by writing the same, we had a, like a story in mind that we wanted to tell. And we were like, okay, the general kind of outline of it. And then I think we both wrote our own versions of it. And then we came uh, together and we read them together. Um, and it was kind of like taking little bits and it was a lot of different colored texts and highlighting and that kind of thing. Um, and then it was a healthy mix of kind of taking what each of us wrote, wrote kind of stitching it together and then also coming up with stuff just on the fly together I would I mean I sat at the yeah. counter at her <laughs> job a couple times and I was just like ah, this 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 and this and she was like yeah or we'd have phone calls at like 11 30 to 1 a.m just on the phone like okay so I'm editing this how does this sound and be like mm, maybe not that but so yeah. a mixture of both independent it's, and merging and then <laughs> I think the the best part of it was we were talking about like sort of a ground plan for one part of it and we were talking like and like I had some time because she was still doing a whole lot of school stuff and I've, I've been graduated for a little while mm -hmm. so I was just like at work and then I could go home and kind of just work on it and play around when I had time and so I had written sort of like what I thought we could start with and then we would like scrap ideas and like start new things and like put them together and then uh, we got to a point she was like I definitely want to write my own version of this and then we can both like look at ours so we like yeah. split up and wrote what we thought and then trying to consolidate that was hilarious because we were like, no way, but I thought it would be happening here. And like, here's where my stairs are. And we have different <laughs> ground plants in our head. So we were like, yeah, so the parents room is here. And she'd be like, no, the parents room no, is here. here. And we'd be like, that's not happening. So yeah, I actually pulled up the Sims. <laughs> yeah, I pulled up the Sims and ended up making my version and she sketched hers. And that's it was amazing. Funny. And then we were like, that's really okay. cool. It was fun. But, but it's really like nice a... having like the sounding board for like a lot of ideas because it's someone yeah. will get stuck somewhere and then someone might see something else. And then so it's really nice to have sort of a checks and balances yeah, in writing. Yeah. That sounds like a lot of fun too, just having another person to, to throw stuff off of. Awesome. So tell people that are watching um, Exuvia, what, uh, what's it about? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> um, I think for me, it's a story about um, discovery. Um, and I think uh, coming to terms with yourself. And I think we, we probably wanna explore more of that. Um, but there's definitely hints and Ali, you can disagree. I don't know, but um, <laughs> there are definitely hints at like some discontentment with where you're at. And um, I think we have a lot more that we want to write about like different people that we're just kind of now introducing. But for this character, I think a lot of it is coming to terms with her choices in a time that nobody could have expected, which I, I think, think right. a lot of people are doing. Probably right, yeah. exactly what you said. And also um, I think with a lot of the stories that are um, probably going to be in this with sort of a genre and um, stories that are following sort of an apocalyptic um, world or like you know that kind of a, a situation it's very much yeah take your your regular life and the struggles of that and then explore that through a whole new lens so you have like ah the end of the world or ah this and you have to learn so much about humanity in that new environment so all yeah. the stuff that maybe she's like our characters are experiencing uh before an event is going to be multiplied or like less and you're going to learn about what's yeah. important you're going to learn about your stakes and like that's sort of what's really exciting is you get to um rediscover priorities like oh school yeah. or whatever might not be what the point is as soon as survival takes like precedence so it's yeah. like, really fun um i really love this story and i really connected to it in a way and and the great thing about art is you can interpret it in any way. But um, the thing that I really got about is, is this idea of um, becoming an adult and growing up and not being able to return home, right? It's this character who is uh, returning home in the middle of this 
crazy time, which is ironic because we wrote all these stories well before the pandemic and now we're right in the middle of all this kind of stuff. Oh, yeah. But to me, it was very much that um, once you grow up, you can't go back to what, what you once knew. Is that something that you guys were playing with at all? Yeah. I think naturally also the places that we are in in our life, um, like we're just now, I'm just now leaving college soon in the next coming months. Allie's been awesome. on her own working towards it. So we've definitely both been getting away from home for the first time. And I think that goes hand in hand with like discovering what your priorities are and, and having that amplified again. It's like a lot of that saying. discomfort of leaving what you knew. And it's like, so there's one thing is like, ah, ah yes, coming home, but then coming home to something new, you, like it's already different. And then it's just gonna get worse. So you're like, have to deal with that yourself, but then deal with these whole new circumstances. So it's sort of like a lot of college students or anyone in their, at any point in their life, dealing with anything, like having to leave that comfort, losing maybe the things that made you like feel safe and confident in your choices. Like now it's just like scattered to the wind maybe. And now you have to like deal with that. Right. Yeah. Yeah. No, I think it's, um, and I do think it's a beautiful story because like you said, it's very much this, um, I mean, it's action packed, it's tense, it's, it's really, um, it has all those genre elements, but it also has that deeper level of it really connects with you emotionally and, um, and really makes you think about all these things we're talking about right now. So it's, I, I find it to be a very beautiful story and I'm very excited to have it be part of this anthology. Um, and you guys are going to do a, a bit of a reading from it today as well, right? Yeah. Very cool. First of all, thank really you for having us. Time, are you going to take turns or how are you going to do it? I think we're just, I'm going to let Angie read it. Yeah, I've been the delegated <laughs> reader for today. Cool. Yeah. All right, go for it. Oh, cool. Great. The trees blur past the side windows as the familiar forest bottlenecking along the road raises my heart rate. I dodge a few more pieces of car, keeping a bit further away from anything smoking. I haven't seen another car for what feels like ages. Does that mean they left? Moved on already? I really need a mom hug right now. She can tell me everything's all right and I'll believe her. God, I know it's cheesy, but I could be going back to an empty house. The staticky voice of the young woman, my road companion in the radio, continues to drone on about recent massive scale terrorist attacks. How can so many national, na nationwide attacks all be executed this flawlessly and to a degree of such absolute carnage? I'm trying not to spiral because my eyes are starting to burn and I really don't need impaired vision while operating heavy machinery in a most definitely not recommended way. The heaps of metal are coming more often now. In all the chaos, people must have really not been paying attention. Maybe because this is the first suburban area for a while? A gradual curve in the road brings the exit sign into view, and I can't hold in the gross, exhausted sob laugh. Out of habit, I signal and take the branching road on the right as it slopes upward. A blinding light spreads like a flash, and I instinctively screw my eyes shut. When I reopen them, the ground is suddenly askew, turning. I'm weightless except for my anchoring seatbelt. My shaking hands are floating a good six inches from the wheel. I can only hear a weird underwater silence as the car barrel rolls. My world completely inverts in a sharp, then warm sensation spreads on the left side of my face. I hear the unmistakable screaming crunch of metal. My body lurches to the left. Ooh, it's great, you guys. Um, so I'm very excited to see what you guys do next, um, as I love the story, as I said. Um, and I'm hoping that we get to connect more as well. Um, so tell me where people can kind of follow you and keep up with you and um, see what you're putting out into the world. Yeah, at my home base, um, I have a website. It's www.angieforella.com. That has all of my social media links and everything like that. But otherwise, I'm primarily on Instagram um, at angie.k.forella. Awesome. I uh, don't have a website yet, but um, <laughs> most of my stuff is also on Instagram um, at hello underscore I'm underscore Allie. And that's, that's kind of where it's at. Very cool. And you guys can find this book. Um, if you go to mirrorboxfilms.com, you can order it. Uh, um, and also we're doing a thing through the end of June that if you send a proof of purchase in, you actually get 
these cool buttons, which are the cover of ah! the, um, the book. <laughs> so, um, that so cool. yeah. So if you order between now and end of June, we'll send you one of those buttons and a little postcard. Um, but you can find it at mirrorboxfilms.com and um, we'll be doing these kind of conversations, video interviews with all the contributors all week. Um, there's 30 stories of um, post-apocalyptic worlds in here and they're all unique and they're all so cool and so good. Um, and this is probably my favorite part of this whole process. I love reading all these stories and pulling them together, but nothing replaces uh, connecting with other human beings and getting to talk to you guys and getting to know you and, and learning about your worlds. And I, I wish we could do it longer um, and maybe we'll do more of these in the future. So thank you guys so much for, uh, for writing you. the story. Thank you. And sharing your voice with the world, so. Thank you. Thank you so right, much. Thanks so much. <laughs>